Salut survivors, welcome back to Solid Worker channel in Mountain Blade Binary Load Guide series. In this video guide, you will learn how to control your units for a campaign map battlefield. I think it's very useful, obviously, in this game to, how, to know how to uh, manage your uh, units in the battlefield. And in this game, it's not necessarily well explained how it works and uh, how to do it and multiple tricks. So I will first go through the setting up of the battlefield battalions, after which we will go through the controls during the battle. And thirdly, I will share with you multiple tips and tricks about the battlefield in general. Please share, like and subscribe for more Mountain Blade Banner Load videos. Now, let's go straight to the video. Setting up the battlefield battalions. So there is one thing that is new now since the release of the game, is that when you are in a battlefield, you can use banners. So you need to pick the right banners for your different uh, companions, because these banners will matter when you are going to give them control over some of the battalions in your battlefield. So when playing the game, you will earn banners, and then this way you can use these banners to your companions. Now, let's lead the fight. When you are on the battlefield, at first, before uh, clicking ready here, you can deploy your units. Now, they are, as I mentioned, the companions that can be assigned to different battalions. So in my case, for example, here I have ERA, who is my battalion leader for the cavalry. Ira has a high skill in uh, riding and in uh, pole arm, and she has the charge bonus banner. So Ira is in charge of the cavalry. Now here I have Ladogal, it's happened to be uh, my wife, and then she has a good skill in bow, and she will uh, therefore be in charge of the archery. And then I have here now two groups of infantry in this uh, example. So here I'll put my brother, Niasen, who has also some pretty good uh, stats in uh, melee. And then I have my, uh, my other companions here, Jamie the Scholar, as our um, companion in charge of the second group of infantry. Now, as you can see here, you can pick your banners for your companions. You can pick your companions for your different groups. Now you can create any group you want. Say if I had here some uh, horse archers, I could create a new group of horse archers. If I wanted to, I could split uh, my archers into two different groups. Um, and let's do it. Let's create a new group of archers. And I will put here, for example, uh, Marina the Akers. She's also good with, uh, with the bow here, both 139. So she will give uh, multiple uh, bonuses. And we will split, I don't know, 40 or Let's make it 50-50. Yeah, good, we'll do. So you, you can create all this, that's step one. And then step two, uh, in your setting up of the battlefield, it's to organize your troops. So in order to organize your troops, you can first select the units on your keyboard. So one, two, three, four, I mean the different battalions. So say here, my infantry group with uh, the uh, javelins, I will set them up more on a defensive position to protect my archers, while the front archers is a group of La Dogal. I'll put them here. And then you can pick here, you know, if you want them very dense or long, and you can decide their different position. So you can press F2 and you select how you want to organize them. I think often it is recommended to use uh, loose for the archery, so F3, because then they are like a bit scattered and they don't um, uh, block each other in order to, to strike, to shoot. Now the one protecting them here on the front, I will uh, set them up in a shield wall using this principle. So one and then F2, shield wall, F2, and now you can see they are much more compact in order to protect the front of this group of archer. Now in my second group of archer, I'll put it on top of the hill. That's uh, a good habit to try to gain the high grounds. Now we are lucky here, we are already on a high ground. Yeah, I had picked the wrong one. So let's do it again. So 
my uh, group of infantry number three, the ones with uh, mostly spearmen that will protect also against the cavalry, obviously. F2 to select the formation, F2 to select shield wall, then I will make them more in line to cover more surface. While the archers behind them, once again, lose. So we'll see these archers here, they will be able to uh, have a very good sight to strike here. And these ones may be a bit less, but they will protect the flank. Now, if the enemy will charge on these ones, then maybe here I will uh, stop the shield wall and I will flank and vice versa. And then we have the cavalry. Now the cavalry, what I would recommend is to typically have them a bit compact, beefy, and use the skein, skein formation. You can see this way they can, they can strike and uh, have this uh, aerodynamic formation. Now the other commands you will have in the game uh, on numerous, uh, you can uh, define to hold fire, you can delegate command. So at the beginning of the battle, it's often uh, better that you are yourself selecting the position and all this of the fight. But then if you are busy or if you are not sure what to do, you can delegate command to a unit. So if, say, later on you don't know where your cavalry is, you just select unit 5 and then do F6 and then the, the commander of these battalions will automatically take the control, in this case, era. Now, about the splitting of the units, as you can see, I have split into two my infantry and into two my archery. This has some other advantages in other cases. I will go through it in the uh, section 3, other tips and tricks. So now let's move on to the actual battle and the controls during the battle. So for now, we have everyone in a position waiting. They are starting to shoot arrows at each other for now. And just keep doing that. What you can typically do, which is very useful, is to use the engage for the archery. Because different units, you can then select if you want them to charge or if you want them to uh, fall back of position. So when you select a unit, here I selected the group number one, for example. After that, you can see by pressing F1, you open the menu, move to position, follow me, charge, engage, fall back. So for example here, if I want my infantry to move forward, say here, I will tell them, move there. Okay, then they move, that's the basic move to position. Now the archery just behind them, if I would like them to be uh, archery, so now the archery, if I would like them to move closer to the enemy and shoot, one uh, good way to do that is to click engage. If you click engage, they will go to the optimum distance towards the enemy in order to strike, to shoot. And they will retreat when it's time to retreat. So you can see here, up, how do you do it? Up. Engage with the F4, then they are moving forward. Let's let's bring our, clear, our own cavalry slightly closer. They're ready to strike on the side. Our archers, as you can see now, they are moving back, right? Because the enemy is moving closer. They move back behind the shield wall. The shield wall took care of the enemy cavalry. Very good. Now the, our cavalry might be a bit too close. And you can see here now they are, they are coming back. So what you can do here with the infantry here, it's either to tell them move back or you can tell them fall back. Fall back is F5. So I'll put F5, they will move back. And then at that moment, there is another interesting options. Wait, the, the archery, they're moving too far now. Stop here. <laughs> Is that sometimes, because of this maneuver, sometimes the units are not oriented properly, right? So in this case here, this army is not anymore in line in front of the enemy. So what you can do is pick the army and you look towards the direction where you want them to, to face. So say here, for example, then you press F7. F7 face this direction. So you need to point your cursor to the direction, press F7, and then they automatically rotate into that position. After which you can easily then tell them, for example, to charge. F1, F3, and then they charge. So, they are charging. Wait, let's be careful, I'm, I'm not fighting myself. Because they were in charge, they are attacking, right? We don't want this to happen for the purpose of this video. Come back, go back to position. Anyway, now they are full of archery, so now will come the moment when our 
cavalry can easily uh, go into position. Now our cavalry will easily be able to attack. So look, here I could tell them to charge, or I could also, for the sake of this um, video guide, then utilize this F6, like I mentioned earlier. I can use F6, I delegate command, and then the cavalry will automatically then uh, do its own uh, movements in, uh, in a smart manner. Now these guys are not facing the correct direction, obviously, obviously. Good, now we make them look at the correct direction. Oh, the enemy banner! It's coming! Ah, they took, it off, took care of it before. Great, great! Now the cavalry, I'm not sure why the cavalry not attacking now. They could easily charge, just charge. So set exam, F1. Oh no, here they are, finally. I'm sure they were putting themselves into position for some reason. Cavalry! They have split themselves into two groups now. Okay, cavalry is now charging. Because they have delegated the command. So they automatically did what they thought was good. So here you can see this was, uh, I mean, it was not a very difficult battle against these Sturgeons. They had no cavalry and I have a pretty uh, strong army. But to divide your armies into subgroups, position yourself, orient your position, move forward, move backward, play of your archery, play of your strengths, and more importantly, play of the geography, right? These uh, hills, for example, have been like fantastic and we'll see the, the kids in a minute. A vast majority of our kills have been achieved by our archery. Look, 105 kills from our Batanian Fian champions. Obviously, uh, that killed a, a vast majority of the enemies. Ah, Siga, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to declare war on you yet, but that was for the purpose of this uh, video. Yes, you're at my mercy. Let's take all our prisoners. Okay. Good. So I wanted to show you first so the setting up of the battlefield, the control during the battle, and now let's discuss these other tips and tricks. Now, one important thing is, as I mentioned during the, the, the battle here, is that you need to select the right position during a battle for your archery, for your cavalry, so archery to be on the high ground, cavalry to be on an open field, and so on and so forth. This applies also on the battle map. So if you have a lot of cavalry, you prefer to fight in an open field. If you want to fight more in a forest, then try to pick your battle in a forest as much as you can. Because the, the battlefield you will have will depend on where is your fight on the campaign map. This has multiple implications because it means, for example, that if you want to get a good uh, positioning, you need to get a mov movement. So for this, you need to, uh, to be uh, fast. So for example, here, in my case, I have a party speed of 4.8, which is not that great, but that's because I'm in the forest, I'm in the snow, and therefore it's low. You can see the quantity of bonuses I have here from my culture, my high morale, and so on and so forth. So your party speed is extremely important so that you can pick the location of your battles and you can pick your battles because sometimes <laughs> you need to retreat, right? Uh, that's, that's just uh, making sense. So party speed is very important. Another important aspect is that when you do these fights, here it was only 160 against 120, so it's not yet an army versus an army. However, later on in the game, you will be fighting on a big group, say a thousand against a thousand. You will not start the battle with a thousand units, and same for your opponents. You will start only with a fraction of that. And then, on the each side of the battlefield, you will have spawn points, where units will appear per wave. Every period of time, you will have reinforcements. It is important to take this into consideration because if you overextend yourself, if you push too far into the enemy and then the enemy is closer to its reinforcement point while you are away from your reinforcement point, you could lose that battle or lose more units than you would need to because you are too far away from your reinforcement point. 
Like, likewise, if you retreat behind your reinforcement points, then your reinforcements coming to the battlefield will appear in the middle of the enemy and they will be wiped out. So when you will have this army against army fight, you need to consider these spawn points for reinforcements. Another important uh, tip is when you have the split between units. As I mentioned at the start of this video, you set up your companions uh, for your different battalions and you can split your battalions. Everyone! Now when you split your battalions, you have multiple advantages in doing that. For example, if in your army you have tier f tier or the high tier units such as Imperial Legionaries, for example, and you don't want them to take risks and they don't need to earn experience anyway. And at the same time you have Imperial Recruits, for example. So if you split your units and then you pick the units of, uh, of lower tier and look at the weapons, typically for example the Empire Recruits, they will have spears, right? Or forks, or <laughs> pitchforks. But anyway, when you will split them, then you will have one group with a majority of Imperial Legionaries that you can keep at the back of the battlefield as a rear strong force. And then you have your lower tier units, more like a Mitchell, right? So to devoid your units can also be useful to uh, devoid your groups in into the battlefield. Another advantage for this is when you are having the, um, the, um, the quest from a merchant to ambush a caravan. Most of the time when you need to do the ambush caravan quest, the enemy uh, attacking the caravan will be a large force of cavalry and uh, horse archers. Therefore, for you, you will need to put your defense in such a way to put your archery protected on the front and on the rear. Now, once again, by splitting your infantry into two, you will be able to have the front of your archer battalion protected and the second group at the rear, at the back of your archery troops. And you can even make them face backward, as I showed you earlier, utilizing F7. This way, your archery will be well protected to defend against the uh, large cavalry wave. Okay, great. So I hope this will have uh, helped you in order to uh, be able to manage the setting up of your battlefield and control units and uh, put yourself in the best situation possible for your, uh, for your battles. If you like this video, please don't forget to, to leave a like and uh, let me know in the comments if you think this would be useful to have a similar video on different type of battles such as siege battles, for example, which is quite different actually when you need to uh, climb on walls or demolish walls or enter through a gate and um, let me know. On that note, let's toast to the like and subscribe buttons. I appreciate very much your support, thank you for watching and see you in my next videos. Cheers!